I visited Wheaton Labs uh, about two years ago and had a, a lot of interesting conversations with people about the potential merit of fungal mycelium, of the roots of mushroom fruiting bodies, as an insulation material. Mostly in industrial applications, they're making it as like packaging, but some entities have even gone so far as to grow a tiny house out of mushroom insulation. So I think what was unique about my perspective about it was that I was seeing it from a permaculture perspective, whereas people manufacturing insulation would not feel like it was economically viable because the time it takes to grow the substance. So you're able to buy what's called a liquid culture from the internet. And a liquid culture is water that has little bits of mycelium in it, which is the roots of mushrooms. And from that little bit of mycelium, you can grow almost an infinite amount of that type of mushroom. So I procured a syringe and I started by cooking rye grain here and I cooked it just like you'd cook rice. And then I pressure canned it so that it would be nice and sterilized in there. And then there's two little holes in the lid. I covered those with some protective tape called polypore tape. And you take the syringe of liquid culture and you pop it right through that hole. And just a little bit of that liquid culture will start to grow into these white fuzzy bits in here. And those white fuzzy bits eventually will take over the whole thing. It'll start looking more like this and then it'll all be white eventually. And after this is all white, you can take it and mix it into a bigger batch of either wood shavings or sawdust or straw. And you can put that in any shape and size that you want. This one is a rectangle. So I've mixed uh, this same type of grain spawn in with a bunch of straw in a rectangular shape and it grew into this, which kind of feels like the weight and density of styrofoam. Studies are showing that most species range between R3.3 and R4 per inch, which tends to be just slightly better than fiberglass bats and mineral wool. So it outperforms the conventional standard materials. It's also completely fire resistant. Do you want me to show you the propane thing? So the first thing you always do is put on your safety glasses. Obviously. So some of the straw is burning in a way initially. But you see the orange flame coming off of the torch itself. And this will smoke a little bit, but it won't catch fire. Let's see what happens if we hit it again. When a mattress company makes a new mattress, they have to do testing called a direct flame test. And there's really specific amounts of heat and all that, but you've gotta be able to do this for 45 seconds or so. And usually what happens at about a minute is the entire mattress goes up in flames. And when it goes up in flames, it goes up bad. It's like you don't wanna be laying on that mattress. So uh, the nature of those uh, fire retardants that are usually used is they work really well until they quit working and then they fail catastrophically. So the fact that this can burn for this long without catching fire is a, a really incredible property that we really like in buildings like homes and stuff like that. So most mycelium cultivation for purposes like this are done in a laboratory setting with high control, easy sterilization, quick pasteurization of substrate. And I think I wanted to see how many parts of the system I could bend and break and cheat on and still have success. I had about 60% success in that my panels formed exactly the way I wanted to with no contamination issues. And I had about 40% that did show up with some discoloration and some competing microbial activity. So that shows me an edge. It means that maybe a dedicated space would yield better results. But it also shows me that it's not prohibitive to people with a limited environment. So this was one of my prototypes. This is the reishi species. And uh, supposedly it's not supposed to grow on straw, but I tried it on straw and wood. And the straw ones actually did better. If I would have let it go long enough, it would have consumed most of this straw matter and become chiefly a exposed white mass. I stopped it a little early just to show what it's made of. I grew it in plastic airline tubs that are 20 inches by 14 and a half inches, and one tub is the next tub's lid. Um, so I had a bunch of starter culture, which was grain spawn that was already growing this mycelium, and then I mixed it into this bulk of straw pressed it into the forms, 
and stacked them up like that. This reishi is slow growing, so this grew for about 10 weeks in that form, at which point I popped it out of the form and let it air dry. So uh, I think the conversation started where Paul was like, hey, you want to come out to the PTJ and teach mushroom insulation? And I'm like, yes, of course I want to do that. So when we were talking about what we can make as a physical artifact to display the virtues of mycelium as insulation, we thought, why don't we make a door? a hollow core door with mushroom insulation on the inside. For this project, we used a species of oyster mushroom, specifically pearl oyster. Uh, it's very aggressive and fast growing, so it doesn't have a hard time out competing other microbes. Uh, and I was able to source the bulk substrate through a partnership with Mother Fungi outside Missoula. So they provided all of the bulk substrate. These are the mushroom fruiting bags that they use to grow their oyster mushroom. So when we showed up there, I hadn't actually met them or made the connection, but I had purchased some of the bulk substrate. It was in a pile out front of their warehouse, and I was kind of rummaging through it, selecting the best ones, and they came out. They were grinning ear, ear to ear. I was like, hey, I'm Bo, and he goes, I know. We're so excited about your project. We'd love to partner with you. So it became a cool partnership. He gave me way more substrate than I had purchased. And he said, next time, let's, uh, let's think ahead a little bit. And they would grow me whatever custom strain I want in whatever volume I want. They're a business, you know, they're just growing mushrooms. And as much as they would love to, they can't do R&D. They can't do things that might affect their bottom line too much. But uh, they were just really excited to partner with this. And it gives them an opportunity to stretch out in ways they wouldn't have otherwise been able to. And then I think there's other room in the future for more collaboration. I built a door, not because I'm an awesome door builder. <laughs> I built a door because we needed a place to put my mycelium. We met all the client's needs, you know. I was like, you know, maybe I'll just get some cast iron hinges. He was like, I don't really like cast iron hinges. He said, you know what would be lovely? A wooden hinge. And he directed my attention to the Prinicky hinge, which is pretty well documented on film. It's made out of a, a root ball slabbed up and then you put the wooden peg through the root end of it so that it gets the extra strength from that root wood so that it doesn't tear out. So that's what we did. Uh, we went deep into Fred's plot and found a nice root. So this was the buttress of the root ball and the roots were coming off of this end. And then these pieces obviously kind of sandwiched in there. So we were able to shape these to be round and give clearance to both the door and the wall and bore out a hole and use a wooden peg. And I'm hopeful that this hinge is big enough. So the first thing we did was build a two by four frame that serves as the interior. And then we fastened the exterior cladding, which is tongue and groove pine. So the inside of it was still hollow at that point. And if you were building a door without mycelium, usually you would use adhesive, some sort of glue to help hold it together. But part of the virtue of mycelium is that it will act as an adhesive. The mycelium will work its way into the surface of the interior of this panel and adhere it together that way. So while it was hollow, we fitted it to the hinges. And then here in this open state, we tacked it on a few rungs at a time and stuffed the substrate down in there and then added a few more and stuffed some more. Figured out a little window thing so we could monitor its growth progress. And then we stuffed it all the way up to this corner, tacked that in, and that's it. I think the primary barrier for using mycelium <clears throat> on a larger scale in industry and construction is actually real estate. Um, most insulation materials, obviously they're very bulky. Things that take up a lot of space, require a lot of money because you need warehouses to store those things. So that's the main challenge. But again, from a permaculture perspective, when you couple the manufacturing of mycelium insulation with the production of mushroom fruiting bodies, of mushrooms for food and medicine, then it becomes a value added product that doesn't cost anymore, it just yields more income. So that's why I'm most interested in it.